metal stall deck. Yeah, that's uh, um, a deck that we haven't seen too much of throughout the weekend uh, or heard too much of throughout the weekend, but it's definitely here, and it's got a chance at making the top eight with a win here uh, against uh, Pedro Torres. Of course, Pedro Torres, no stranger to uh, to top eights and no stranger to um, to the camera as he is just always always seems to be in the running. He's, he's just one of the absolute best players to come out of, out of Europe in recent years, and um, he's just showing another dominant performance here and one round away from potentially top eighting. Now, Pedro does get to go first here. He starts with Meowth. He is playing Zoroark, as we've seen. Um, he and the rest of his team play uh, this weekend. When you go Zoroark against this stall deck, things start to look a little bit in interesting, really. Uh, there's a lot of things that just don't really matter for the stall deck that, uh, um, you know, that, that it plays. So it's got to find an avenue to be able to uh, slow the Zoroark down and get, get itself to uh, a winning position. I think the big things in this matchup are going to be um, obviously Preston is playing a you know could stall control deck, so energy count is going to be really important. These Zorak decks don't play a lot of energy; they play a bunch of special energy that can be fabbed or enhanced, hammered away. Um, but I think the advantage that Pedro does have and the strategy that I would expect him to go for is kind of twofold. You see that he started with a Meowth and he's also getting another one in play. That's because in addition to the Persian GX that we normally see from all of these um, Zorark decks, he also has a non-GX Persian that will be able to just kind of strip away all of the resources um, from pay, uh, Preston's hand with the make him pay attack. Absolutely. It's... It's kind of the ace in the hole, right, in this matchup. It's it's one of those just clutch cards that comes uh, comes in handiest when you're up against these random decks that you normally don't prepare for. And uh, just a very, very good tech card for Pedro in this matchup. Uh, of course, he also has a Ditto in play. That Ditto Prism can become any, uh, basically any Pokemon that's stage one in uh, in Pedro's deck. Yeah, that's the whole reason of the Persian in there. In addition, into, in addition to the Persian, um, this is also the Tord Reclive list of Zorark, which means that uh, Pedro has access to the Naganadal GX, which is not a card that all of these decks play. Stinger GX will, can reset both players' prizes to three each. So that would just mean that Pedro would need to knock out a Lucario Melmetal GX, which is no easy feat, mind you, but is his easiest route to victory here so uh, Pedro does have a lot of options that a lot of the other Zorark decks don't play mind you Preston will be uh, very, he's, he's going to know exactly what Pedro is on at this point in the tournament yeah you uh, you kind of nailed it right there that's gonna be one of the main ways for Pedro to win here it's very difficult for you to be able to uh, for you to be able to take six prizes against uh, Preston's deck it's it's just su such a defensive uh, list but if all you have to do is take three, then, you know, there's there's definitely something that uh, that Pedro can do there. And that's if he chooses to go that route. Really, he has plenty of options available to him. And uh, I'm just really excited to see uh, what kind of op what kind of decisions both of these players make, because this is just an interesting matchup. Another factor that we need to consider is the clock. So these stall decks are not known for winning the game very quickly, right? They're called stall decks, called control decks, because they want to <laughs> slow down the game and they want to, you know, win with something like unknown hand or just running your opponent out of resources and eventually they deck out. And a tie in an early game, you know, earlier in the round might be fine earlier in the tournament rather but at this point it's not what either of these players want it would eliminate them both from top eight contention so these players are going to really really want to finish this uh game this round rather sure and we do see lapras still the active pokemon here for preston i mean it seems kind of <laughs> it seems kind of interesting right lapras what does it really do you know it's just got 130 hit points it's um it, it doesn't attack for for really much of anything when all you play is a couple of energies it's just it's just kind of there. Yeah, and, uh, and some versions of this deck don't even play the counter energy or anything to be able to um, really attack with it. Um, but Preston does. I don't think it's going to be a very relevant part of this matchup. Now Preston is going to end his turn. Uh, didn't really do too much on his first turn. And, um, and now it's on Pedro to start evolving his stage ones. Uh, he's got a lot of basic Pokemon that are just meant to be there to be evolved as soon as possible. So he had a, an amazing setup on turn one, just needs to follow it up with uh, a great turn two to go uh, to go with it. 
Yep, so we see Preston play that power plant uh, stadium card. It's going to turn off the abilities for EX and GX Pokemon, so that's going to shut down a um, Pedro's trades, most importantly. Yeah, that was a great card to find, and it puts a lot of pressure on Pedro to have an answer for it. You know, I mean, he has his aura arc, which is great. That's that's what you want to do. But if you're not, um, but you're, if you're not able to trade, then Zorik obviously just looks much much weaker. That actually puts uh, Pedro in a position where he's saying, "Well, you're not putting any pressure on me. It's not like I fear that Lapras. Let's just uh, take it a little bit slow here." You know what we just saw, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. He, that was a, uh, was a Catter Day. <laughs> uh, I've seen it earlier in this tournament as well. So this is not the first time that Catter Day's uh, been used uh, this tournament, but it's it's not often you get to see uh, Meowth show what day it is. Both of these players really focused on trying to win this match, move on to the top eight, of course. Pedro is uh, no stranger to top eights at the international level. He is a 2017 uh, Oceania champion. Hasn't, uh, he's looking to add another international, this time a North American one to his resume. Looks like a field blower is uh, being discarded for an ultra ball, I believe. Yep. Preston gonna go ahead and ultra ball. Any one Pokemon from his deck can go into his hand at the cost of that Ultra Ball plus two additional cards. Um, just a fantastic Pokemon card that uh, is seeing it, one of its final games on stream as it will be rotating out after this tournament. And we will not, no longer be able to see it in standard, but it's just, it's it's had a, an incredible showing up until now and it's it's earned its retirement. Indeed it has. We see the Lucario and Melmetal GX on the bench for Page uh, for Preston, rather. So unclear what's going to happen now. Stevens resolve. Let me go ahead and search his deck for three cards. So we do have that Lucario and uh, Melmetal on screen. We have. We get to see just how powerful this Lucario and Melmetal is at slowing the game down. Not only does it have 260 hit points, which is, you know, that's one big baby, but it also has Full Metal Wall GX. This is one of the more unique GX attacks that uh, that exists. It makes it so that for the rest of the game, your metal Pokemon take 30 less damage. That's pretty awesome. That's, uh, that just means that uh, you use the attack, you want to use it as early as possible, as opposed to most to some GX attacks, which you kind of want a time to, to perfection. But this one just says, oh, man, use me as soon as possible, and uh, you'll get rewarded. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really interesting attack. We don't really have many like that that just kind of affect the whole game. Um, when I first read the card, I was pretty confused. I had to do a double take. But, yeah, it's one of the strongest pieces of these kind of Vile Plume stall decks. The, the Vile Plume, by the way, is usually what people will call these decks. You know, LM stall, Lucario stall, Vile Plume stall. But the Vile Plume isn't going to be too relevant here, so I don't think we'll see Preston actually set it up. I have some breaking news, by the way, Kenny. News report, hit me. Yeah, the news report. If uh, the scientists are correct, then that would mean that we have our next uh, introduction into the top eight, and that would be uh, Hunter Butler, as he actually got an ID from his opponent, and that would, in that would mean that uh, he actually now has 35 points. And, uh, wow, not yeah. what I expected to see. Congratulations uh, from Hunter. It sounds like he was paired against a friend, uh, Noah, who gave him, just, you know, agreed to ID. He, didn't, he wanted to see his friend make the top eight. And with the top eight, Hunter has earned his invite as well, which is actually really a, a great story because uh, I don't know if you watched his day one interview, but he said, yeah, I'm just, I'm just here to see my friends have some, maybe win some, have fun, maybe win some money. I mean, I, I guess if I top it, I can get my <laughs> invite. And uh, I guess it's become a reality now. Jeez, man. Can't help but bring a smile to your face after uh, hearing that story. Honestly, the Pokemon trading card game just full of, uh, full of magic, and that's uh, definitely one of the better stories of the weekend. Now, Pedro does wake up after, after the, the Catter Day there, and uh, that just means that you can Catter Day again some other day. Man, this tournament's going to be so sweet. We have the uh, Stunfist deck locked up for the top eight. We could see the we'd see the Vile Plume, uh, Lucario, Melmetal, Stall deck, and a lot of interesting things. I think a lot more interesting. Uh, I think the format has shaped up a lot more interesting than most people would have expected. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've already known that it was a uh, kind of a wide open field, but I, 
did we ever expect for it to be this wide open? Like we have four different decks in the top, uh, in the top eight that we, you know, that we anticipate. And um, with Hunter now, we, we, uh, geez, man, I just, I don't even know what to say. I, I, I don't think any, I don't think on Thursday night, if you said, do you think that Stunfist is going to make the top eight and a Meganium deck is going to go very deep in the tournament? Many people would have agreed with you. I, I would have taken the under on that. That would have been a safe were. play. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have gotten punished just like always. So we do see a rescue stretcher here from Pedro as Pedro does bring back, I believe, a Mars Shadow. And Mars the Shadow Mars Shadow get does rid get rid of the, of the power, power plant. So now we're going to get to see some trades. Yeah, the Lusamine to recur the power plant, Mars Shadow to get rid of it is kind of an interesting play. Yeah, um, you might have access to more uh, to more Lusamines than than Mars Shadows at you know at the end of the day, but until then, let's trade. We're seeing two trades from Pedro here. Two trades, and he still has a Ditto that he can evolve. I think he just drew into a uh, Zoroark there. And like you said, we will try to keep you guys updated with who else makes the top eight. We really want to make sure that all of you are updated to what's exactly happening and how the elimination rounds of this tournament are going to shake out. Looks like we're going for a Guzma there. The Guzma will promote the uh, Lucario and Malmetal. And of course, Zorark GX will be the active Pokemon for Pedro. Pedro with four bench Pokemon potentially could fill up the bench before attacking to Riot a speeding for an additional 20 damage. Yep, Pedro with a bunch of cards in hand, a lot of options on what he wants to do here. Looks like he is just happy to ride his beating. Well, ride his beating. Looks like uh, looks like 80 damage from that ride is beating there. Uh, 70. Oh, I'm sorry, 70 damage. You're right. The metal frying pan. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's just such a big boy. Yeah. 260 hit points. 190 remaining. And I mean, not only do you, you know, obviously reduce. Uh, damage through your own GX attack, but you also have things like Metal Frying Pan. It's just good luck. Yeah, just good just luck a, getting past that. It's just a tank, and I think that's kind of exactly what the whole point of the deck is, is just trying to make sure you can keep this Lucario and Mel Metal around. Also important to note that um, the Full Metal Wall GX will discard the energy cards um, or the energy card attached to the Zorark, which is a, another part of the strategy, the energy denial, and you just kind of have that built in with this attack that you already want to do. It was just, it was like it was made to be in these control decks. Absolutely. So uh, I'm really, uh, I'm really interested to see when, when Pater decides to strike with that, uh, with that Persian. I think that Persian is going to kind of like just hit the brakes on Preston's strategies. Uh, you know, once Preston does get a, a larger hand, that's that's going to mean, like, you know, cards like Lusamine are going to lose their power. Cards like, obviously, the Unknown are going to lose their power and, and whatnot. And that's just, that's what, uh, that's the big um, wall that, that Preston has to get through in order to, to win this game. And, and now we do see him uh, use Full Metal Wall GX. So from here on out, he will be taking an additional 30 damage less from attacks onto his uh, Metal Pokemon. Yep, so Full Metal Wall GX is active. You see the GX counter kind of moved toward uh, the active spot. Just as a reminder, that double colorless energy is gone. <laughs> We're going to do some trading on Pedro's side. There is that Naganadal GX that we talked about. Well, in hand for yeah, that will give Pedro. Pedro three prizes, but he'll still have to get past the a Lucario and Malmetal. I mean, with Ace Rolla, with all those things to worry about that's still no easy task yeah it's never never easy to get through these type of decks it was that's what they were designed to do and the clock is ticking both uh, literally in this match and figuratively in the tournament uh, both of these players hungry for that top eight double colorless energy attached onto the zorg gx of course it lost its double colorless energy after that full metal wall gx uh, due to uh, the extra energy attached to the uh, uh, to the uh, Lucario and Malmetal. Now, looks like a Pokemon communication. We'll find Pedro any Pokemon from his deck. Will he go for the? Will he go for the Poipol? Looks like he is. So 
he is starting to set up for for that three prize um i guess a stinger gx, stinger GX? oh yeah. well yeah, yeah yeah i was gonna say knockout but that wouldn't be the <laughs> that wouldn't be the case if only Re reset your opponent's prices to three and then get a three prize knockout that's the word GG. reset the three prize reset that's all right moving forward just gonna see another right is actually beating. 60 damage i believe it's just 60 damage that he's dealing yeah 120 minus 60. Even I can do that math. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Preston does have a max potion in hand, it looks like. Uh, Lusamine, just a bunch of the classic cards you would expect out of this sort of strategy. Yeah, I mean, cards like Acerola, they just, um, I believe that Preston would uh, would play something along those lines, right? Uh, definitely plays Acerola, so you have your max potions, you have those. It's just, it's it's going to be a long day for Pedro. He's got to he's got to find a way to uh, just wear Preston's hands down, and uh, then afterwards, of course, once he's finally worn the hand down enough, uh, uh, knock out the the Lucario Mount Metal. And we saw Ifaba come down to take out that double colorless energy, and this you can kind of see the tension here, which is that you know this this you, this deck is trying to slow you down and uh, mill you out. With you know you just run out of cards, you can't draw a card during your turn. But it's also removing your energy, so you're forced to dig and use trade and get rid of resources and draw cards to find your energy. And the Zorark decks don't traditionally have a whole lot of energy, and all of it is typically special. So it's going to be very difficult for Pedro to really mount an offense here. Yeah, he's he's gotten past I believe three double colors. If not three, then two. Um, which, I mean, those are. One got discarded for sure from the GX attack, and then the one is in the lost zone. Right. That's two out of the four. Yeah, at least two out of the four are gone. And that means that there is still basically just two double colors left at most, and then the, the four triple acceleration energy. That's, I mean, those are resources that you can't really underestimate. And uh, that's that's how you're going to win the game or lose the game, potentially. And now we do see that Guzman. All right. Here we go. So we see the Guzma on the to, onto the Lapras, bringing up that Neganatal. I suspect that we're going to see a triple acceleration energy. He has it in hand, so yeah, I would definitely uh, assume that triple acceleration energy will reset him both to three prizes, and then from that point on, it's fair game. Okay. So remember, both players are going to be tied on prizes, and uh, that does imply that your opponent, well, your opponent being Pedro. Pedro uh, will not be ahead on prizes. He won't, uh, Preston won't be behind. And um, it just, it, it's it's not a situation that pay, that Preston's used to being in, you know, in the mid and late stages of the game. Yeah, and you can see Preston taking a, a bit to just read the card and see what exactly is going on because it's not a usual typical inclusion in these Zorark decks. This was um, some innovation from the European team, including uh, toward Reklev, Pedro, uh, uh, current world champion Robin Schultz. Um, they really innovated, iterated on this deck, got to this point, and it's served them well so far. I think uh, Tord barely missed day two. I know Robin's involved in day two, and obviously Pedro is here in front of us playing for top eight. All right. So both players resetting. are resetting their prizes now, each laying out three. And this is, again, the strategy we talked about at the top of the game, which is just, can I reset the prizes to three and then knock out a um, tag team GX Pokemon like Lucario and Melmetal? It's, knocking out Lucario and Melmetal is not an easy feat. However, it is the easiest path to victory for Pedro. Yeah. Uh, so like, like, I, like I was trying to say, it's basically it's three prizes apiece, and that's just a situation that Preston's deck is not meant to... Uh, to, to be in right P Preston just doesn't take prizes so uh, at this point you know cards like lieutenant surge strategy no longer an option and uh if Pedro can help it then it won't be an option uh in the future and then now we see i believe another power plant right yeah it was lucimine for lucimine power plant power plant gets played uh, and then the max potion excuse me on the um lucario and melmetal just to clear all that damage away energy is no longer really needed Yeah, I mean, Lusamine is just so strong in this kind of a, like, lock situation. When you when you have, you know, 260 hit points when with minus 60 damage to rely on, uh, 
you can afford to make these lucidine plays and just extend the game for as long as possible. Yeah, it's one of the cards that really makes this kind of deck function. We saw the field blower there from Pedro getting rid of the not only the the uh, stadium in play, but also the metal frying pan, making it just a little bit easier for him to s score a potential knockout. By the way, I also think it's kind of cool and interesting that Preston's really played with a small hand throughout you know this entire hand, uh, throughout this entire game for the most part. He hasn't really tried to. Uh, get to the insane hand size limits that uh, that sometimes players try to get to. Uh, he's just trying to keep his resources low. He he might be playing around uh, a potential Persian. He might not know for sure that Pedro has it, but doesn't want to fall into the trap when you see a couple of meows and a ditto just sitting down. And uh, I just think that it's an interesting play by, by Preston, and uh, he could potentially be making this on purpose. Both these players are you know, some of the finest players in the game trying their hardest. I know Preston has been on this deck forever. He's going to know the ins and outs, all of the matchups. Maybe Niganadal is something he didn't quite expect, but he's going to know how to play his own deck versus the field very well. Play pool discarded for trade. Trades away. So draw two. And we see the uh, Pedro separating his Pokemon from the rest of his cards in his discard pile. That's going to be because of Persian GX's vengeance attack. They can uh, add damage based on the amount of Pokemon in your discard pile. So I want to make that clear to both players uh, at all points during the game. And he does have, I believe, seven Pokemon in the discard pile. So he's close to maxing out on that. And then that's when you start dealing really, uh, really high amounts of damage. And even the uh, the Lucario and Malmetal start to start to take note. Yeah, definitely. He he knows what he's going to try to do in this game. It's like the well, Professor Elm's lecture. Oh, wait. Let me go ahead and look through his deck. On the side of Preston, still have that Lapras active. Of course, no energy on the uh, Melmetal. But also, oh, sorry, no damage on the Lucario on Melmetal anymore. So fully built up. Only one tag team knockout uh, for Pedro to take here. But it's not going to be an easy time taking it. You don't start knocking down, knocking out these uh, Lapras yet, do you? Uh, it doesn't. So I think the main thing is you need to conserve your energy right. for a turn. So like knocking out the Lapras wouldn't be right. a, a bad, bad thing necessarily, but you want to make sure that you can conserve your energy for when it really matters. And exactly. currently, it, it's not as if Preston is going to play another Lapras or something to get knocked out into exactly. the game. Yeah, so you don't. I, I suspect that Pedro is going to wait till he has an energy, has something like a Guzma, and just has a way to be applying pressure to the Lucario Melmetal, because right now that is his win condition. I do agree. Preston, though, has, well, he has an S-Ball, so he may very well be playing something beyond, something besides a, uh, a big GX Pokemon. Or he could so, just find himself a, another Lucario Melmetal, or he could just miss, it's up to him. It's always interesting to see these different sort of uh, decks come into play. Like this, this, this game, for instance, is very different from a normal game of Pokemon, right? Uh, you're, this is, just, you know, resetting to three prizes, having just a <laughs> one big target to hit. It's just not really how a normal game plays it's out. It's a bit of an understatement, but yes, I agree. It's, uh, it's definitely different from a normal game of Pokemon, as we've had a Lapras just kind of hanging out, and uh, then Nag uh, Naganadal just kind of resetting the game. Just about everything that you can do in the card game has been done between these two decks. Yep, so that Nest Ball was going to go ahead and look through, see what his uh, resources are that he has left. Lusamine again is going to find a Lusamine and the Power Plant. And at this point, you've got to believe that the Power Plant's going to start sticking. Uh, he's Pedro's been able to get rid of it over and over, but, I mean, he's got to be running out of resources to get rid of it, right? Uh, I don't know how many field blowers he's had, but he, I think he has played one. Um, and then the Mars Shadow isn't a thing at the moment. Looks like he only plays one field blower. Uh, we see a Professor Kikui. Yeah, Kikui drawing some cards. So looks like uh, Pedro has a full grip now. We see some energy, some communications, but a lot of that doesn't really matter. He's just going to go ahead and pass the turn back. Yeah, I mean, unless you have Guzma and unless you have a double colorless energy, which... I mean, at that point, your opponent can just lose uh, um and uh, just continue to set their hand and, like, you know, uh, 
set their hand up to, to what they want to, to do. There, there's no real pressure here uh, against Preston, and that's really that's really the name of the game right now. Yeah. Is that uh, Pedro can do whatever he'd like, but at the eight, uh, until he starts damaging and pressuring the uh, the Lucario, Preston can just play a Lusamine to get back any uh, any card in his discard pile that he'd like and just get that Lusamine back. Or if he feels like he wants to draw cards from his deck and find something in his deck slowly, then that's what he can do. I mean, he's got these options available to him. What's happening now is, uh, well, maybe not this turn, but what's happening in the game so far is what Preston wants, and it's on Pedro to do something else. Here we go, though. That's that's what I wanted to see here out of Pedro, is that he does have that double colorless energy, and he wants to put it to uh, to the most use possible. If he can get rid of a Lusamine here, then that would mean that you no longer have to deal with a Lusamine, uh, to my knowledge. I don't think that there's anything beyond like Palpad to get, to get one of these Lusamines back. It looks like we will see a make him pay for 20. Page is going to look at the hand and choose, uh, leave, he's going to leave Preston with four cards. It's like he gets rid of Lusamine and Faba. So now, unless the Palpad's already been played, that means that um, that's going to be the only resource available to him to get these Lusamines back. And these Lusamines are kind of how he keeps recycling his hand and uh, or his cards. And uh, it, it was a very effective um, person. You could have definitely waited to make him pay later on if you would have liked to get an even bigger, uh, an, ever be an even bigger effect out of uh, out of the Persian. But it's just at some point you got to make him pay, right? Well, the big thing is he just wants to stop the Lusamine loop. And uh, the Faba can, so on l the last turn, Preston got back the Faba, which can uh, remove the double colorless. And so it's kind of like, well, I guess I just have to act now and put an end to this. All we right. see a Gladion like a Gladion, now. yeah. Only three prizes left, of course. Gladion going to switch with one of the prize cards. Let Preston put one of them in his hand. Preston now uh, obviously trying to figure out what resources Pedro has available to him. There's no real secret behind both of these players' strategies at this point. Both of these players have, are kind of playing um, with their strategies revealed. And I'm looking at Pedro's deck, and it's looking pretty small, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know Pedro's exact supporter count if he has any. I know he has one judge looking at it now. Um, ways to cycle back in. But yeah, that's that's the what Preston is trying to go for. Didn't quite see what the Gladion took. Um, but now we are back to Pedro's turn. And it looks like two double colorless and two um, triple acceleration energy have been used up. This position is also awkward because it basically relies on a switch effect like a Guzma because you can't read, you know, if you attack, or sorry, if you attach to uh, move the Neganatal, then that's your attachment for the turn. The energy goes away. So pretty awkward spot. We'll just see Pedro pass it back. Yeah, we see Preston just consistently putting Pedro in awkward spots. It's not like these, uh, it's not like these spots or uh, situations that Pedro puts himself in. It's, it's just like, you know, Preston goes like, all right, well, you only have a limited amount of energy. Let me just Guzma up your uh, your Necrozma. Uh, oh, okay. So you're you're retreating to uh, to make me pay. That's that's cute. Guzma Necrozma. Yeah. And uh, eventually Pedro's gonna run himself out of Guzmas, you know. And because of cards like Lusamine, when he did have uh, access to them, Preston was in a position where um, where he was just always uh, we, where he always had the resources he needed to make Pedro struggle. Uh, and I mean, we're talking about. Not only does Pedro only play eight total energies in his deck, he also only plays a you know a select amount of Guzmas. He only plays a select amount of um, uh, of other effects, which which uh, which are relevant against Preston. Because remember, Preston's deck is very uh, very unique. It attacks the game in a different way. So a lot of the cards that Pedro's playing just really aren't as important as they would be against other more uh, common matchups. And he's just putting. He's just putting Preston in, uh, or Pre Preston is just putting Pedro in just many, many awkward spots. And it's uh, finally looking like it's starting to pay off. But now we see that Nanu, Nanu actually allows Pedro to get, to um, send the uh, the Naganatal GX into the discard pile and replace it with his own Zorua. So now Zorua, a much easier 
Uh, much easier card to retreat, of course, but uh, more importantly, it can turn into a uh, Azor GX in the future and start attacking, and also is just more relevant than Naganado would have been in this particular spot. So it's also a way for him to just kind of be more selective about the amount of uh, about which Pokemon he has in his uh, on his field. Yeah, the Naganado has served its purpose uh, doing the Stinger GX, of course. So no more use for it. We're just going to swap that out. And really, this is the game that these players just have to play. Uh, Pedro is just waiting for the right moment to strike, waiting to draw the right cards in a certain combination. And Preston is just waiting it out until he needs to act as well, hoping that he can uh, eventually deck Pedro. At this point, we're down to 19 minutes left on the clock. Uh, I am fairly certain that Pedro is going to deck before Preston. And uh, Pedro, I mean, Pedro's got to be low double digits uh, of deck sizes. I mean, we're talking about like 11-ish cards, 10-ish cards. Just at that, looking at that angle of uh, uh, of the screen, so th there's only so many turns left for Pedro. Even if he has a card like Judge, he'll only be extending it for uh, a select amount of time. Uh, within with 19 minutes left on the clock, 18 and, a, and change, then I'm not sure if there's inevitability quite yet for Preston, but he's getting there. The part of the issue is that so. Preston, so, so if this game were to just end, just imagine that it magically ends here, Preston cannot win game two. If Pedro were to uh, lose this game with you know 15 minutes left, he could theoretically win a game two. Like getting win a game two and a game three is gonna be tough, but um, P Preston is just kind of hard locked out of it. His deck doesn't, it can't take prizes, it can't rush the board. Um, this is just what he's doing. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a very good point actually, is that there's a lot of pressure on Preston to win game one here. A ton of pressure. If Preston doesn't win game one, he can basically kiss uh, the top eight goodbye. And if, uh, if Pedro doesn't win game one, assuming there's still enough time left on the clock, which is starting to get a little close, then even he is basically still kissing the top eight goodbye because it's very difficult for him to, uh, to win two games with you know, 17, 18 minutes left on the clock. It's just... It's possible, but yeah, which which it's leads unlikely. to the unfortunate circumstance that the, the the game might end in a draw. But we still have some time for that. It's just really important for both players to execute their strategy in the way that they can here. Important to note too that uh, Pedro does have a judge. I don't know if it's been. I assume it hasn't been played or discarded yet. So that will kind of reset things and buy him a lot more turns when it comes to decking out. But even then, like if you can't win the game, what are you hoping to do? Get a draw? It's not gonna. It's not gonna give you a top eight, you know. Yeah, exactly. So this is a must-win game for both of these players, if you really think about it. And I'm not convinced that Pedro has the tools needed to win, unless Preston gets very unlucky. And we do see Pedro speeding things up a bit. Um, he he was not playing slowly, but he he's definitely focused now on draw, check if it's what I need, no ship the turn back, um, because again, he is the one that can. Theoretically, he really wants to, both players really want to win the game, but he's the one that can theoretically um, finish up and he needs to kind of push what he's doing instead of burning down the clock. Looks like thanks to that pal pad, um, Preston does have a Lusamine in hand right now. So Preston's back to doing Preston things. Yeah, and this is, Lusamine is one of the cards that um, just has the it is one of the cards that makes this these decks tick. It is just the 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 engine of it. We saw the Lusamine and Fabi get removed after they got Lusamine back uh, a few turns ago, but now that the Lu that uh, Preston has the Lusamine locked up again, he can just start taking any of the supporters. Typically, it's Lusamine and another one or double Lusamine, a Stadium if he'll need it, but I don't suspect he will. And this is kind of the reason why these decks are able. Uh, to function as they do. Yeah, we were actually under the impression that there was only two Lusamine in the deck, but with that being, with there being a third, and um, of course, it's just our eyes deceiving us, uh, with there being a third, then that just opens up a ton of possibilities for Preston here. Uh, that, that third Lusamine just really, once again, putting, uh, is going to put a lot of pressure on Pedro the longer the game goes. Now we have the Guzma. Pedro pulls the trigger on a Guzma. That means that he's got to 
he's got to make this Guzma work for him because if his opponent has another Guzma, uh, bring you know prom makes him prom promote something like a Ditto or a Zorua, uh, then he's going to be back in the situation that he was in before. Pedro only has access to a limited amount of these key supporter cards like Guzma. He's got to make them work. Instead, looks like he's just passing. Yeah, he's just, just bringing up the uh, Lucario and Mel Metal. It's a big three retreat cost. It can only move through uh, an effect like a Guzma itself. He does have the Persian GX active now. Right. I mean, but if if Preston now goes, like, for example, like, let's say he doesn't have Guzma in his hand, but then he just goes, like, all right, all right I'll lose a mean. Uh, a Luzamine for a Guzma and a Luzamine, you know, pass, then this is just a lock that Pedro's going to be in for a while. Oh, well, I think we see a Reds challenge. Yeah, I'm, I think I think that Pedro, uh, uh, unless I'm wrong about this, I think that Pedro knew all of the cards in Preston's hand off of the the um, Green's Exploration into the into the Poke Year, into the Luzamine. So I think that he knew that he was safe for this turn. Right. The point is that, you know, even even in the following turn, all you have to do is just get another, you know, you play your Lusamine, you find the, uh, you know, you find the Guzman and you find your Lusamine again, and then you're, you're, you're expecting to get uh, Guzman back. It's just, I mean, it's just a, a tough spot to be in. You need to be able to basically threaten to attack with everything you have in play to, to negate the Guzma there. All right, so there is triple um, acceleration energy and with a choice, choice band. band. I have to imagine that the... Uh, is the vengeance is going to be maxed out? I do believe it is, which means that it's 190 damage, uh, 220 with uh, choice band minus 60. We're looking at what 160 damage. Yep, and, and it looks judge. like we're getting the a judge. judge. So, nice. so this is kind of the turning point for Pedro, right? This is where he's gone. Okay, well, I set up this sequence of cards. I set up the Guzma into the uh, commit energy into the judge. I now this is how he hopes to win the game. He, we did see the. Uh, Max Potion in Preston's hand, but that's being reset with the judge. And this is just kind of what Pedro has been waiting for all game. He's just been sitting back, waiting for him to, waiting for, waiting to draw, rather, excuse me, the this sequence of cards. And now we'll have to see what Preston can put together after this big attack. Yeah, that was huge here for, for Pedro. He was able to judge away Pe Preston's hand. He, he no longer has this sculpted hand that he's been, uh, that he's been working with for a little bit. Uh, and Preston does uh, take a ton of damage. So now uh, I believe it's 160 damage. Or, well, I guess we'll find out, but I believe it's 160 damage. But either way, it sets him up for a two-turn KO. And that means that Preston now needs some help from uh, from the four cards he's drawing. So, yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah, they're just doing the math here. It should be 160 as far as I understand if the Vengeance is maxed out. I can't... From my angle, I actually can't see all of the Pokemon... Um, and, of course, we have the GX effect and the uh, metal frying pan. Well, now we're going to have to find out what kind of uh, what kind of hand Preston got out of this. Well, it looks like players are still calculating energy. And... Yep. Looks like 140. Yeah, 140. Oh, I, maybe I, they didn't I just, max I can't see the Vengeance right. uh, Pokemon. Sure. I, I mean, I completely understand. I can't either. Um, uh, so it looks like there was not max out amount of damage, but close enough. Well, that's still a two turn. It, two it's turn still just make, the yeah. important thing is that it makes the, I think makes Preston have to act. Sure. I did see, I believe I saw a max potion in his hand. I mean, uh, that would be huge. That would put another, that would add another turn to the, to the clock here. And that would force another triple acceleration energy, which is really the, uh, the, the key point there. I'm not sure how many triple acceleration energies are gone, but there can't be many left. And there we do There's see it, max the potion. max potion resetting the damage back down to zero. See, due to Lusamine and, and things like that, there's going to be more max potions than there are triple excel energies. And that's that's really the, uh, the turning point there, right? Like, you can only attack so many times before, before you run out of uh, resources. And because of... Uh, because of the uh, the heavy high hit points that that Preston has, he, Preston is going to have uh, Preston's going to be running you out of resources in the meantime. And once you do run out of all of these resources, that's where Preston uh, finally can start to think about locking up the game. But remember, there's still only 10 minutes left on the clock. Yeah, basically at, at oh. 
Looks like we are uh, picking up the cards. Not sure. I mean, it, I would assume that Pedro maybe is scooping right now. And if Pedro is scooping right now, then uh, my guess is going to be that they're going to have 10 minutes left and Pedro's going to have to win two games in those 10 minutes to, uh, to win the match. Meanwhile, Preston, all he has to do is just not lose. Now, with that said, I'm not 100%. Um, we haven't gotten confirmation nope, yet. Nope, look, it looks like that is uh, what happened there as Preston is now up. And so this is kind of the do or die point, I suppose, where, again, Preston is up a game. He cannot reasonably win a game in nine minutes. It's just not going to happen. Um, Oh, it looks like the timer's actually a little bit off, and uh, this is not good news for uh, for Pedro, as there's actually only about eight minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. Uh, it looks to be about something like a, uh, what, 50-second time difference? Sure, it, it isn't not really going to matter. It's just, it's going to be very, very difficult for Every a, second counts Pedro, for Pedro to uh, get through two of these games. Just, you know, taking normal game actions uh, is going to just going to eat up that much of the clock um but he has to keep playing right he's gonna keep having a chance but uh, unless unless something goes uh very differently than i expect uh, well preston ellis how about that one huh uh this has been about okay the timer is now correct by the way guys uh this has been a very slow paced and grindy first game obviously as we expected it to be Mm -hmm. uh, but now Pedro has to change the direction of this uh, of this second game. He can't afford that anymore. There, I mean, he he actually has to go for the exact 180, and it needs to be a blisteringly fast game where uh, Preston basically just does not draw uh, the Lucario and Malmetal. He does not draw anything, and uh, and he's able to take this game in just unbelievably fast fashion. Yeah, I mean that's that's the outright you play you play to your opponent not having. The tag team GX. You played it being able to just kind of run them over, restart a second, restart a third game, but it's just going to be very, very difficult. So now Pedro does get to go first as he did lose game one. Starts with Ditto and uh, play, uh, finds Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele finds Judge. Judge. Yep, just, just trying to cut off uh, as many resources from Preston as possible. You know, it's working, I guess, very similar to how the Marsh Shadow Let Loose works, where you're just trying to disrupt your opponent on turn one. Certainly, Judge isn't the best draw supporter that Pedro has access to. But at this point, again, if he's going to win the game, it's not going to really be through traditional means. He's going to have to cross his fingers and hope that these next four cards, plus the one on top of Preston's deck for his turn, uh, don't give him anything that playable. And, well, that's that's a strategy that Pedro already had in mind, right? Like. I have to believe that this is this is what, how he wrote it up when he when he scooped. He's like, all right, I'm going for a turn one judge. Hope he uh, hope he doesn't draw very well off of it, and hopefully I'll be able to take a two to three minute victory and keep the uh, keep the dream alive for yeah. for a victory. I mean, and uh, a nest ball being the first card played out of that four card hand from Preston just means you know I mean we can see that Lucario and Malmet will come come down right now, and then that's just that's automatically going to take a couple of turns at least to get uh, to get knocked out. Yeah, and that's something, I mean, when you're in Pedro's seat, like, you know, he had no energy left, concede, move on to the next game, but you, you just, you're not going to quit playing, right? I mean, you're, you're playing for a potential top eight who, at the international. Who knows what could happen? Yeah, even if there's a fraction of a percentage yeah. left. You're, uh, you're going to keep fan. playing. You're, you know, you're going to spend these next couple minutes trying to win. Maybe it happens, but you have, to, you have to try. Yeah, I mean, I've been in similar positions before where your heart's just, you know, sunk down as bad as far low as far down as it can go but you're you're still playing you're you're still hoping but uh i mean you're aware that basically it's all but you know it's all but over you'll see something in uh the pokemon trading card game which is that the top players will not necessarily always keep playing the game because there are certain constraints whether it's due to time or you know mental energy but you have to take every tiny edge that you can get and there have been games that have been won and lost on 0.001%, right, on someone playing out two extra turns, hoping to draw the exact right cards out of a 35-card deck. You, you just, you have to maximize as someone that's trying to, you know, top eight the international, win the international. You you have to play those tiny edges, and that's exactly what Pedro's doing here. Yeah, and we do find that Lucario on Melmetal 
did not expect to find anything beyond uh, anything smaller than that as right now Preston's game plan is simple do not lose do not give uh, Pedro the opportunity to come back here don't turn this into a draw we don't want to draw we only we can only afford to win here so going uh, nest ball into Lucario and Mel Metal is about as good as you can hope for if you're Preston and now Pedro again time is not on his side he's got to He's got to find a strategy, and he's got to find it fast, and it's got to just start running through these Pokemon. He, 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 like, he's got to try to dodge things like Max Potion, Acerola, those kinds of cards. And because he used Judge on turn one, there's a solid chance that he can do so. He's just got to put himself in a position to do it. Dedenne draws six cards here for Pedro. At this point, he's all in. And yeah, where he's looking for, again, that three prize reset, and maybe he can get to the point where um, the GX attack on the Lucario MML hasn't been used yet when he does the reset and can put out some damage. Looks like he did not hit the triple acceleration energies, which is going to go ahead and attach double colorless to the Zorark on the bench. Three and a half minutes remaining on the clock. Back to Preston. Remember, up a game. And with six prizes still remaining for both of these players, this game does not seem to be anywhere near over yet. And uh, Metal Frying Pan, add insult to injury, as uh, he also plays a power plant to go with it. So because of that power plant and that metal frying plant, it, yeah, these are the tools that Pedro or that Preston has to extend this game as, uh, as much as possible. Yeah, and I mean, it's just it's drawing very thin here with two minutes and 45 seconds left, but you have to do the things you have to do. I would expect that if, if and when time is called, these players do not play out the remaining three turns. I, I think it's just going to be um, they'll, they'll see the writing on the wall. Yeah, I mean, it, it, also, it obviously depends like if Preston only has, you know, Lucario and Melmetal in play, then there's a chance but outside of that um, then then I do agree but we do see a riotous beating here with a choice band attached. So that's, uh, that's 120 damage onto this Lucario and Melmetal. Yep, that's 120 after the Metal Frying Pan takes effect. We do see the Max Potion in Preston's hand as well. Going to be able to buy him some time. That's that feeling at the pit of your stomach when you're Pedro. You're just sitting there hoping your opponent doesn't play anything relevant. And then the moment that the uh, the, the Max Potion gets played, you just kind of like slouch down on your chair. Oh, man. Nothing I can do here. Yep. And uh, a minute and 40 seconds remaining. You see, you see the, the, the frown, the look of concern on the player's face who seems to be a, all but eliminated from top eight contention. And Preston Ellis now looking through his uh, deck, uh, I'm sure confidently, I'm sure he's feeling, well, that look, <laughs> that look on his face doesn't say so, but I'm sure he's feeling great inside. And uh, I'm sure that he's just thinking, all right, just no, no funny business. Let's... Let's get to top eight here. As yeah, we wind down to the final minute of this match, he, uh, Pedro is going to f just keep forcing Preston to have heal effects here. Uh, but I suspect that he is going to. There's the max potion. Another max <laughs> potion. Jeez. 50 seconds left on the clock. So Steven's resolve really just keep he him coming. He cannot do anything but frown here. I, 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 there's no point in hiding it. Final round of Swiss. Final turns. In this, uh, in this match, you're doing what you can, but you just lost such a drawn out match. And uh, yeah, allow a Gladion here from Preston, gonna allow him to look through his uh, prizes. That's just gonna eat up more and more time from the clock. Yeah, obviously in a, in a frustrating uh, place to be in for Pedro. You know, part of the reason that you, we all love Pokemon, we play Pokemon and care about it so much is the emotion we have attached to it. We love when we win. We wanna make top eights, have a chance of being international champion and win. When that's taken away from you, it does not feel good. Uh, we see a big GX. Going to go ahead and, again, apply some more damage modifiers. Get rid of the energy on that Zorark. As there time is called, there is the handshake. handshake. Pedro said it. Uh, he looked at the judge, said, all right, it's over. That's it. That's, that's Congratulations do. to Preston Ellis. Preston Ellis defeating Pedro Torres one game to nothing in just one of the most drawn-out uh, victories.